The Most Dangerous Man in America is a film about Daniel Ellsberg and the Pentagon Papers. Um, the release of the Pentagon Papers in 1971, which revealed a, a trajectory of lies that had been hidden up to that point that changed the temperature of the public opinion about the Vietnam War. Um, it's also a story for our times about uh, the the spiritual political transformation of an individual from a war maker to a peacemaker and a story about moral courage and civic courage. One of the things that when we started the when we started the film was about 2004, 2005 and we were already in a war, two wars actually, we had been lied into one war, we were in another war and we knew that this uh, episode in American history 40 years ago was going to resonate even if we said nothing about what was happening today. So we felt a real imperative um, that that was a time in America where not only Daniel Ellsberg, but a lot of people became very, very active uh, against what the government was doing. And if they saw the war as being immoral, they mobilized against it. And in the years since, and that was true for the press too, in the years since, people got more and more complacent and we really were in very tough times then, as we still are now, and felt like this story was um, an important one for people to see and identify with and maybe reinvigorate people to become more active again in what their government was doing and basically in our democracy. I think the main thing that we discovered in our research was a different interpretation of the events of what we call Watergate now. That in fact, probably more important than the break into the Watergate um, complex in Washington and the Democratic National Committee headquarters was the break into Daniel Ellsberg's psychiatrist's office. That that was actually the event that could be tracked all the way back to the White House and that was the event that caused Nixon to make a lot of mistakes to try to um, quiet Dan to actually stop Dan from being considered a reasonable person and also to because he thought Dan had other secrets that he might reveal. So in his attempts to, to um, silence Daniel Ellsberg, Richard Nixon caused his own downfall. One of the things that struck me was, um, you know, we both knew, knew the story. I remember that I was 20 years old when the Pentagon Papers were published. And I thought of it kind of as a single act of, uh, of courage, of conscience over, conscience over career of one man. But in doing the research and interviewing all the people that were involved at that time, the newspaper men, the lawyer for the newspapers, the draft resistors, the senator, the congressman, um, many, many people were presented with crises of conscience. And what would I do? You know, what, you know, everyone was faced with, do I do the, um, do I listen to my heart? Do I listen to my conscience and take a big risk? Maybe risk an institution, maybe risk my career. And uh, most of them chose, did the right thing, if you will. And maybe the only exceptions to that were the people from the Nixon administration who also were presented with that crisis of conscience and do I do the right thing, or do I do what's expedient? So that, to me, was um, something that then speaks to everybody, speaks to the, the audience who's watching, because we're all presented with those kind of crises of conscience throughout our lives. There's lots of opportunities for people to step forward who have the kind of information that Daniel had at the time. And what's so amazing is how rare it is for that person to step forward and to take that risk. and. Um, you know, it could happen today, and yet it hasn't. And, you know, that's what this story, I think, is inspiring because it's the story of one of those rare people who's willing to take the personal risk because of a sense of duty to country and duty to the truth. And um, if it were to happen today, I think the media is in a very different place than it was at that time. It's so compromised and so threatened that it's hard to be courageous when you feel that you're fighting for your life. Um, you know, it's hard to say what would happen or how it would take shape. Matthew Ho, who's a recent uh, uh, dissenter against the Afghan, uh, Afghanistan in, uh, invasion, um, whatever we're calling it, uh, Afghanistan war, he has, you know, gotten not a lot of press. He's said a lot of that. He is a whistleblower of this war. Um, I, Dan, of course, did it on a grand scale and, and you know, and it 
t t took many months to copy the papers and released a huge amount of information. So I don't know if there would be an equivalent now. But as he says, if he were to do it now, he would just buy a scanner and scan the papers and put them out on the Internet. So I think it would take a different shape now if it were to happen. The times today are very different politically than they were uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago. In the 60s and 70s, it was, a, it was a time growing out of the civil rights movement, the anti-war movement, where people were mobilized and people felt like they had a stake in what the country was doing and that personally they needed to get involved, whether it was marching in the streets, whether it was being uh, put, pulling together in organizations, doing mass action, doing individual action, whatever. And I think we've lost that sense. Um, especially among the young, but, especially, but, but also throughout all of our society, and we've become a more kind of complacent America. The question is, you know, if something like that, if somebody did something like that today, leak these papers to the New York Times, to a newspaper, would the same events happen? Would it upend the whole country like it did back then? I think nobody knows. Um, I think the assumption is because we are so complacent that the same outcomes wouldn't happen. But until somebody does it, those events don't start to happen. It takes one person to start the ball rolling. And then if there is a movement and people respond and then respond, we could have a similar outcome. Mm -hmm. To me, I think the important question is not so much would the same thing happen today if somebody leaked papers, but what is possible when somebody acts out of conscience, takes a risk, and puts a lot on the line in order to affect the most important things that are happening to us today in matters of war and peace and in matters of our democracy? Mm -hmm.